Uh, good afternoon to the uh, respected uh, jury and the organizers of this conference and also my fellow presentees. My name is Rohit Krishna, I'm a master's student from National Forensic Sciences University. And this is a research based on microfluidic devices and a coupled method with UV visible spectroscopy for the field detection and analysis of marijuana samples. So when it comes to the introduction, cannabis being the world's most consumed drug according to the as the 2022 report by UNODC uh, and Delta 98C being the active constituent, it is of high importance because in most of the places it is still an illegal substance to have. And to do the field analysis, to commit these uh, research based on the field analysis, it's an important aspect. And that's where the introduction of mobile forensic laboratories are more important because taking the crime scene analysis to the crime scene is a much more effective way for a faster access at the same time faster results that you can see and the confirmatory results can always be done back at the laboratories and this is only possible using portable analytical devices and these devices are expensive because most of them are electro, especially for the cannabis testing, it's most of them are electrochemical or immunobased. So having the cost of uh, manufacturing antibodies or having the cost of having expensive electrodes like gold electrodes for their electrochemical detectors, it also requires high technical skills to understand if, for example, the electrochemical detectors require a high technical skills to understand and differentiate the values as well. So that's where the most important part that is the microfluidic devices comes into picture. So in this particular research, the main three important categories that is reagent standards and samplings. The reagent used for the testing was a fast B reagent and it was prepared according to the DFS manual. And the THC standard was then CLE diluted from 100 to 0 0.1 microgram per ml. And the samples were obtained from the NDPS department, Center of Excellence from National Forensic Sciences University. And Starting the study, we went with a computational investigation for the absorbance of uh, THC as well as FBB and also THC and FBB complex. FBB here stands for fast blue B, by the way. And the computational investigation had three main steps, that is geometrical optimization. So these molecules were taken and they were converted and uh, using a software called Avogadro, we geometrically optimized these molecules and created minimum energy structures. And using time-dependent density function theory, which is a method derived from Schrodinger's equations, that is uh, time-dependent method is used uh, for the analysis of the um, uh, absorbance. And that's been done for THC, FBB, as well as the THC, FBB complex. And a free software called Orca, which is also very effective, is used. So making this also a very cost-effective computational method. And in the computational method, we are able to even set a solvent parameter. And we went for a method called solvent parameter using the CPCM, that is a continuum polarized method for the solvation model. And at the end, the results were then uh, uh, outputted and we also analyzed and absorbance spectra created for THC, FBB, and also THC, FBB complex. So this is for the experimental confirmation. So the results of uh, the computational results, uh, it indicated that, you know, there is an peak absorbance at 440 to 499 very particular for that particular complex. Delta 9 THC, as you can see in the blue color, the spectra is there. And then the FBB is represented in the uh, uh, green color spectra. And you can see that there's a red spectra which stands for the THC FBB complex. And that is specific at 440 to 490 nanometers according to the computational method. This is purely theoretical study using computer softwares that we have performed. And this has been the basic uh, starting point of our research. So now the point is to validate it using experimental designs. So for validating, we also looked into the fact that we need to take the crime scene, to, uh, so the crime investigation to the uh, scene and the analysis to the scene. So that's where we went into microfluidic paper-based uh, analytical devices, that is mu pads. And these mu pads that we have created were created from Wattman filter paper number 42. And they are extremely cost-effective and also leave behind a very small carbon footprint. And they are also having a particular hydrophobic and hydrophilic 
zones where the hydrophilic zones are where your reagents are stored and the hydrophobic uh, zo uh, zones will allow the reagents to be localized in that particular zone. So we have uh, R1 and R2. Here the R2 is our uh, uh, NaOH solution which has been infused into uh, cotton and which has been uh, manufactured, the cotton paper was manufactured with infused NaOH and it was placed in the R2 chamber and the R1 chamber was the FPB reagent which was painted and the hydrophobic reagent, usually there are conventional methods of back sprinting but to even reduce the cost and make it more accessible, we used a method called wax painting where a wax has been directly painted over to the area and it was heated to make it uh, locked into the Wattman filter paper. So the main uh, analysis comes into picture where the reagents have been put in and the sample, the reagents are then after the particular reagents are stored, the reagents are then put into contact by folding the paper and the sample is put on the top of the paper and the results can be obtained because the R1 and R2 hydrophilic zones have come into contact. Now to further the investigation, uh, for on-scene analysis, we, uh, for example, in uh, mobile forensic units, having a portable UV visible spectrophotometer, we can also give an, a nice inclusion criteria to see whether if it is not based on our theoretical study. So the MUPAD and uv -vis analysis was further done, where the detected MUPADs, the particular color reaction area that we have detected, what we do is we punch out that particular area using a paper puncher, and that particular puncher is that punched out area is then dissolved in methanol, and then uh, Portex and centrifuge uh, respectively. And that particular solution, the superconducting that is obtained is subjected to a visible spectroscopic analysis. And we used a thermoscientific evolution 201 dual spectrophotometer with uh, from 200 to 700 nanometers, scan speed 1, to, uh, 1,200 nanometer per second. And this is the experimental results that we've obtained and it is very much coinciding and it's also uh, accepting towards the theoretical aspect. So the, the theoretical aspect has also been validated using the experimental design. As you can see, number A in this particular diagram is of uh, THC and number B is for fast blue B and C is for the diluted uh, samples of fast blue, B, fast blue B and THC uh, complex. So you can see a 485, there's a peak and for d e they can also be seen at 480 and 480 there is a peak indicating that the complex has been formed and f has been studied as a, a reference because most of the time marijuana samples also come in contact or they're also mixed with uh, tobacco samples. So this is tobacco extract to 90 nanometers so just to clarify that the tobacco and fbb complex speak as marijuana and FBB. As you can see in the G, uh, you can see that marijuana and FBB give at uh, the particular 480 nanometers while tobacco and FBB does not. So this is further validating the theoretical aspect that we've discovered using computational techniques. And the validation for the microfluidic devices were done. The detection limits were done from 1000 to 0 0.1 microgram per ml. Have, the dilutions have been made and uh, positive results have been obtained till 0 0.1 microgram per ml. And the temperature validation was done at uh, three different temperature sets, that is 0 to 4, minus 4 degrees Celsius, 20 to 80, 80 to 120 degrees Celsius. All of them gave positive results, but there are few structural changes that happen to the microfluidic devices. For example, at very high temperatures of 80 to 120, since we use Wattman filter paper, the problem was that the paper was curling a bit. Uh, there was a structural integrity was lost for the paper, but it is highly, uh, you know, uh, impossible for a normal crime scene to have such temperatures. So uh, it is not that much of a problem. Even after the structural failure was there, the results were still positive. And then the perfect uh, validated uh, technique works in 20 to 80 degrees Celsius. And at zero to four degrees Celsius, the reaction did take place, but it took maybe three, four seconds, there was a delay in development of reaction, which is very much uh, uh, very much uh, normal for chemical reactions to be much slower in lower temperature due to the uh, molecular uh, moments. And then validation results for pH at 1, 7, and 13 was done. At 1, it did not, in highly acidic pH, it did not give any color variations. So that means at high, highly acidic pH is not suitable for this particular device. At 7, there was a neutral light pink color. 
and at the main testing pH was at 13. That is why we use NaOH, uh, 0.1 normal NaOH for the development of this particular device. And this is hereby validated using the pH study. And the shelf study was done for three months and it gave ex excellent results. The study was further extended up to five months and it did give results up to five months. But uh, according to the product or according to the device that we have developed, we are confident up to three months and would suggest to uh, manufacture new ones after three months. And anyways, it is very cost effective and the entire manufacturing time would take less than 15 minutes or so. And interference study was also done for the MUPADS where a lot of chemicals were then used instead of the actual analyte to see if there's any uh, cross interference or anything. So ferric sulfate did not give any change. Phenophthalene gave a pinkish hue, which is not the color that uh, corresponds to marijuana, that is THC, or gallic acid, brownish black, and chloroform toluene and hand sanitizers or cleaning agents did not have any changes. So these are the common chemicals available in a lab. So just to make sure that it does not interfere with any other have done the validation study using interfering chemicals and solvents. Further on, uh, for the ones that we have found were positive using the MUPAD as well as the UAVIS, we went for a GCMS confirmation and we were able to detect it and match it with the Delta 9 THC. So making this method a highly effective method as we can complete the preliminary as well as semi-confirmatory analysis at the crime scene and only the ones which pass the semi-confirmatory analysis can go for GCMS also reducing the expenses associated with GCMS analysis in our forensic laboratories. And the advantages and applications for this methods, of course, it's a green analytical method. The carbon footprint is extremely low as the uh, MUPAD is only using bags as paper, and uh, that is a uh, Wattman filter paper, and the low cost and effective because most of the electrochemical and immunobased methods are extremely expensive, and it's not feasible for the laboratory to manufacture them in mass quantities, but in this case, it is extremely cost effective. And also, no technical skills is required on testing. An electrochemical uh, detection could require, could need a particular set, uh, set of skills for the identification of validation or for understanding the results or interpretation of the results. But here, it is a very much straightforward process and there's no technical skills. It's basically I mean, mostly based on uh, colorimetric analysis. And there's no additional chemicals required on site as every chemical that we need is within this particular device. You only need the sample and direct application. There's no additional chemicals that is required for testing. And there's an assured shelf life of three months and works satisfactorily up to five months. And then UV visible absorbance confirmation is also a good inclusion criteria for GPMS confirmation. So also helping us rule out certain samples within the uh, field analysis itself. And then computational methods have also helped in the study extremely because even before wasting all the reagents, we did a computational study and the theoretical study helped us see that there could be a possibility for this particular reaction to work place, which we validated using experimental design. So the use of computational methods in forensic investigation or the use of computational methods in chemistry in general is of high importance because we can simulate a lot of chemical reactions. We can simulate a lot of uh, spectroscopic uh, uh, analysis using uh, computational methods. And this can be a, uh, you know, a starting it, point for further research. Uh, I'll request you to just sum up your uh, presentation because we are already telling Yeah, it's done. It's, it's, yeah, it's done now. Okay. Uh, these are my references and thank you.